So the blockbuster trade has finally happened, and the Lakers are bringing in Russell Westbrook. And all they had to give up was Kyle Kuzma, KCP, and Montrez Harrell. And my first reaction to this is, for the Lakers, I love it. How can you not love it? And I'm the last person that should because, I'll be honest, I'm not a Westbrook guy. I've said I don't feel like he can win a title. Basically because I felt like you're not good enough come crunch time, you don't shoot it well enough, and you're not going to defer to Kevin Durant. So how are you going to ever defer to somebody better than you and win a championship? And it might be answered here because if there's anyone that he's going to, it's going to be LeBron, and I think they're going to be able to make it work to at least an extent because I think not. it's not even necessarily about deferring to LeBron. It's the fact that LeBron's running the show. It doesn't matter who's surrounding him. He's running the show, and... For whatever you want to say about LeBron, I think he's very good at getting people the ball where they want it, especially fellow guards, such as a Kyrie Irving type. And I think he's going to know when to give it to Westbrook, when to give it to him to slash. And we saw that with Westbrook when he played with Harden. Towards that second half of that season, the last season with Harden, his numbers were out of this world, and it was hard to run the show, knowing when to give, when to give it to him. Now, come postseason, it didn't really work. They were going too small. He was also playing with a guy that in the postseason, Harden, Let's be nice and say he's not at his best usually in the postseason. And now LeBron, he could get it done. So now you're surrounding Anthony Davis, LeBron James with another superstar talent. When you're able to bring in superstar talent for Kuzma, Harrell, KCP in the 22nd pick, how can you not love it? And you can, if you can find a way to bring in Buddy Heel to surround them... Oh, that's a perfect fit because that's really all they need right now is a shooter and a guy, not Ben McAmore who's a great shooter, but a guy that can also put the ball on the floor a little bit. That's a little bit of a threat that's not just a stiff that's just going to stand there and shoot threes. Not that McAmore's a stiff, but I'm just saying in general. If you could bring in Buddy Heald and well, and bring in Buddy Heald as well, oh, it's going to be tough for them not to be the favorites out of the West. But for the Wizards, I get you're not confident you're going to bring back a lot. He has a, made dang near $50 million a year for the next two years. But that's just it. It's two years. And there's a lot of teams that are going all in, just like the Lakers. So if you're going to make the deal with the Lakers, I get it. He wants out. You want to build a team different around Beal. And since Westbrook wants out, I guess it makes sense. But with the Lakers, you at least should be able to get Talon, Horror, and Tucker out of them. For Westbrook, you're getting guys that they were lo they were loving to get rid of. They would love to get rid of Kuzma. I don't think that Kuzma is nearly as bad as everyone wants to say, but I think it's pretty evident that he's not LeBron's favorite player if you look at the body language between them. Montrez Harrell. Guy was complaining about not getting minutes, and when he got minutes, he wasn't really making stuff happen in the postseason to get for the Lakers in that first round. And then KCP, who I like, but let's be honest here. I mean, I don't think Lakers fans, he's been... he's. Let's be real here. He's just faced a lot of hate from Lakers fans. I think they'll be fine getting rid of him. And the 22nd pick in the NBA draft, whoop de doo They're getting rid of that, and they're getting they're giving up two second-round picks anyway. So for the Wizards, I don't like it. I'm not mad at getting rid of Westbrook, I guess, if he wants out. But you should be able to get more in return. But really, this is about the Lakers. The only downside of this is, for one, Anthony Davis now you got to play center the majority of the time. Because you can't, in today's NBA, have LeBron James, who's an average NBA shooter usually from beyond the arc. Sometimes he's a little better. Occasionally he's a little worse. He's probably a slightly above average shooter. And then you've got Westbrook, who can't shoot threes at all. So in today's league, you can't have a, you can't have a center that is just going to be rim running all day when you have Westbrook, who wants to live around the rim. you got to have Anthony Davis after five. Try and find some type of stretch four. See what you can get there. And you can't bring in DeRozan. I'm sorry. I'm not a DeRozan guy either. So it would really be somebody that could, something that could prove me wrong if they brought in DeRozan and Westbrook and if they were able to win a chip. But I think if I'm designing this roster, I'm trying to bring in Buddy Heald with them and get some type of stretch for it and tell Anthony Davis, you got to play center. You're at your best anyway when you're at center. And now you definitely have to do it. But for the Lakers, they're looking good, man. They're looking good. This is a great move for them. But let me know what y'all think. Drop a comment, hit that like, and then subscribe. Please? Yes, sir.